Have they have we been doing with starting that on time? They've been doing better? Anybody yeah. checking it? I've got to throw my phone down. All right. Twenty nine. We'll start. We'll call the meeting of the mayor and town council to order. Uh, the meeting's being broadcast live on Comcast 23 and live streamed on the Carol Media Center dot org slash live dash Hampstead dash dash town dash council dash meeting. There's enough dashes in there and also on Facebook dot com under Carol Media Center. Um, before I start with the opening prayer, I'll just um, want to offer our thanks. It's been an interesting 24 hours around town here. Uh, we had an Amber Alert and it was tied to a child who lives in Hampstead whose father uh, lives in, in Westminster, and let me just say that it wasn't just a matter of a, of a father keeping a child past um, when he was supposed to return him. There were other issues involved there, which involved uh, a lot of uh, coordination and um, search, and thankfully the uh, child was found unharmed and is back with his mother in, in good health. Um, and my thanks to the Maryland State Police, uh, the Maryland Natural Resources Police, um, our, our police department for making sure that that all happened, and uh, we're grateful that it did happen. And so with that, we'll uh, start the meeting with our opening prayer and the pledge. Dear Lord, we submit ourselves to you as your servants and the servants of the people of Hampstead who've placed their trust in us. Please allow every word spoken and every action taken to be in the best interest of Hampstead and for everyone gathered here tonight to be a stabilizing influence in these unsettled times. The Lord bless, the, bless this meeting and our town. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Tammy Roll. Mayor Nevin. Here. Councilwoman Barrett. Here. Councilwoman Painter. Here. Councilman Thomas. Here. Councilman Unglesby. Here. And Councilman Zolman. Here. Thank you. And a minute approvals from uh, the March meeting on the 8th. So moved. Thank you, Dave. Second. Second by Deb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Tammy, when you're ready for the town manager's report. Okay. There's a lot of bids out there. Um, town staff conducted a bid opening for the police station flooring replacement. The bid award will be requested later in the meeting. The request for bids for the replacement of the walking trail at Chief Sites Park was released on Thursday, April 7th, and the bid opening will be held on Thursday, May 5th in Town Hall. The request for bids for two new town welcome signs for both the south and north locations was released yesterday. Uh, this bid opening scheduled for 2 p.m. Friday, May 6th in Town Hall. Our commercial and re residential projects are moving forward. We are currently working on several different site plans and business projects. Staff continues to attend weekly meetings with the new management team of the North Carroll High School property. We hired a facilities manager, Ron Schroers. Ron lives in Hampstead and is a former council member. Um, Hans Brothers working on their concept plan and hopes to break ground in the summer of 2023. Their new facility in the pork and beans store will be located on a parcel between Pukes and the Hampstead bypass. The fire department had their groundbreaking ceremony on Monday, April 4th, and it was very well attended. Their site plan includes a new fire station, a separate activities hall. Um, please visit their website for more details about this plan and information on how to make a donation. Jim and I attended a Zoom meeting with economic development, uh, county staff, and the project's engineer, engineering firm <coughs> to wrap up the final details of the Industrial Development Authority's Carroll Business Park project. They plan to move began moving dirt for their grading only plan which includes constructing the stormwater facilities businesses have already shown interest in a parcel that is very marketable <coughs> staff will be attending a meeting with the hampstead day stakeholders tomorrow evening the town will have a table at hampstead day so please for the council there if um let me know if you'll be available to help manage the town table i may need to be available to assist with other volunteer duties throughout the day <clears throat> Main Street will be closed again this year for the event. Craft and food vendors will line the street along, alongside entertainment for kids and adults. There will be a kids' zone, puppet show, and music. St. John's Methodist Church is allowing the use of their northern parking lot for the duo that's scheduled to perform that day since our War Memorial Park will be under construction. And Hampstead Day, scheduled, or Hampstead Day yes, is scheduled for Saturday, May 21st from 8 to 3. <clears throat> for Public Works, um, we conducted interviews for the few applications that we received for a new public works person to replace Jared.
currently we're waiting for direction on how to move forward. Staff have been working on electrical and SCADA upgrades for pump house number five and preparing for the Hempstead Day event. New concrete barrier blocks have been ordered to use during this event. Um, apparently there was, I know of one, maybe two breaches last year for where we had the area blocked off. So now we have more concrete concrete blocks. So you're not going to take the ones from the park and bring them around? They weren't big enough. People just picked them up and moved them. Well, or People weren't picking them up and moving them. Yeah, but they were sidestepping them. Yeah. They will not sidestep these. And then, and then it's a uh, dual purpose. The blocks can be used to store debris that's been cleared for stormwater events until it can be, or stormwater inlets, excuse me, until it can be hauled to the dump. So that's what will be used when it's not Hampstead Day. And so currently the staff's preparing the West Street lot for storage of these blocks. But I thought they they couldn't move the lower the teardrops. They was just they were just getting around them. So are these like the white jersey wall kind of things? Is that? Uh, I'm familiar with um, the concrete company selling. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Ricky had some alongside his picnic tables outside the beach. Room. No, those are pretty big. <clears throat> For our finance department, the town switched to a new payroll company on April fourth. Cheryl and Judy have been working tirelessly to make certain it was a good transition. Our payday has been moved from Wednesday to Thursday to improve the payroll process for staff. In the past, staff have prepared timesheets on Sundays or holidays to prepare for paychecks to be processed on Wednesdays. Since we began outsourcing payroll, we are required to submit timesheets on Friday when a holiday falls on a Monday. So having a Thursday payroll eliminates these issues and schedule changes. Our pay period, which begins on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday, will remain the same. We, um, we are working towards an electronic sum submittal of hours, eventually removing the submittal of paper timesheets from the process. And we also switched to part one of our new finance, financial system admins on April 1st. Um, invoicing is now processed through the new system. Cheryl and Christina are working together on this transition. We will switch to the utilities module for our water billing on July 1st. The new software also has a module to track our permits, which are currently entered into an access database. And this module also allows for tracking of code enforcement matters, which we don't have a tracking, formal tracking system for that right now. All departments have been working on the FY23 budget. Uh, we have had an internal budget meeting and our meetings and our public budget workshop is scheduled for Tuesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. The FY23 budget will be introduced at the May council meeting. For our human resources department, as mentioned, Judy's focus has been implementing our new payroll system. She is also executing our annual benefits and insurance enrollments. Employees will now have the option to enroll into a vision program at the monthly cost of $5.30 per individual plan or $12.01 per family plan starting July 1st. And I don't think we've sent that email out yet, so, <laughs> but there will be an option now for vision. She also, um, completed a salary study for current employee positions and starting salaries for new hires. We're also working on a uh, redesign of our website. So Christina and Jim reviewed the initial draft of the website redesign and have sent comments and suggestions back to the graphic designer. The new website will be more user friendly on all platforms, including your cell phone, and will be ADA compliant. So we hope to have the redesign website live in a couple of months. Any questions for Tammy? All right, Diane, you want to start us on oversights? Sure. Uh, Farmers Market Advisory Team met on April 4th. Almost all of our vendors from the 2021 season have renewed for this year. Two new produce vendors will be joining the market, Acre by Acre Farm and Echo Valley, which is an organic farm. Other new vendors are Littlest Plant Shop, which sells decorative potted plants, and Ditsy Slanted Threads, I think I have the name right, um, which sells handmade purses, purses, totes, and other hand-sewn items. In addition to Fuchs Spice, our new sponsors include Galloping Goose Vineyards and Winery, Ridge Engineering, Aaron Gibson Law Office, and Douglas Harrell Agency. We are still looking for groups of cleanup volunteers to help put away the tents and chairs in the seating areas um, when the market closes at noon each week. If you participate in a nonprofit and can commit to providing volunteers for one month, we will make a $100 donation to your organization as a thank you. We will be having a vendor's luncheon on April 30th, and the market advisory team's next meeting will be May 2nd. Is Cookie Lady's coming back? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Just for you. I, I just want to point out that it's only like 15 minutes cleanup. Mm -hmm. Tops. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's going to take them longer to I'm drive to get here. I know. All right, Wayne. Service hours. I think they said they've tried that in years past, and they weren't really able to get people to commit. <clears throat> but so. I was thinking, what, 30 vendors? Is it <clears throat> of the 30 vendors, you couldn't have, like, two vendors volunteer a Saturday to, put, to help put stuff away? Then they start asking for discounts on their rental. Okay. They have enough to do. We'll work it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Hampstead train station committee is getting ready for the music in the park uh, because the pavilion's a little behind. Our first event's going to be on June 27th. Uh, sorry, June 25th. Is that right? Yeah, June 25th. Um, and uh, I believe it's going to be Hickory Wind. Uh, they were scheduled for the 11th, and I'll reach out to them to see if they can do the, the first one in June. Um, we did just hear from one of our bands that we had booked that they're not going to be able to make it uh, Family Matters. So um, I should have all the bands booked by the end of this month. Uh, the train station plans to open on Hampstead Day, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a good year. We've already got some of our adver advertisements out for the train station and the merchandiser. Uh, Tree Commission, uh, tonight we have on the agenda uh, the appointment of Molly Rose. She's going to be our newest member, and uh, we're also working on our, our spring planting. So I hope to have that uh, ready in by the end of May. Very good. Thank you. Deb? Okay, the planning and zoning met on March 23rd, 2022. And we discussed, we didn't have anything on the agenda. We did get an update from the Carroll County Department of Planning, and they are still working on their zoning updates and their water and sewer master plans. One thing I did find interesting, we talked about Hans moving. They're just... FYI, grins and giggles. Um, they're currently on one acre right now, and they're moving. The site is going to be a 10-acre site. So that just shows you the what's going to happen up there. It's going to be nice. When Tammy and I, when Tammy and I toured that plant, that was claustrophobic, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a word. And dangerous having to walk down the wet steps. Wet Concrete. cement steps. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, expanding ten, 10 times their size is going to be huge for this Depends, town. It's really going to be equipment based on the inside. Yeah. Thank you. How, are we getting anywhere closer to the little six house, seven house mm -hmm. subdivision Westwood? It's funny you should say that. No. They Thank emerged you. from stormwater, finally had their concept plan approved, and now they need a preliminary stormwater approved. Then they'll need their final stormwater approved, but they're passing around their final plan to the rest of the agencies. Okay. So. Okay. God knows. And months yet. Okay. Good job. Dave? MML scholarships this year, 2022. All applicants must be a resident of one of the eight municipalities here in Carroll County. That would be Hampstead, Manchester, Mount Airy. New Windsor, Sykesville, Ponytown, Union Bridge, and Westminster. This application packet can be found on the town's website. Just click on under forms, you'll see it, the 2022 application. The application is scheduled, uh, the cutoff is going to be Friday, April 22nd, which is only about a week and a half away, so we may extend that maybe to the end of this month, the 29th, to have more applicants. You got any yet? Uh, not at this point. So, the, they're all last minute, usually. All last yes. minute, yes, that's correct. Uh, War Memorial Park renovations, since we were just talking a little bit about that. All the demo and the old stage has been done. Uh, the seating area has been completed and taken out, thanks to Public Works once again for doing that. We are set to begin on the 25th of April for grading on the lot. The bandstand is being built in the factory right now, and it will be on schedule to ship to the site on May 4th. <clears throat> It should arrive about May 11th after the shipment. The bandstand should be completed, erected enough about the 27th of May. Uh, then concrete work will follow and should be done by June 3rd. So as long as the weather holds out and the shipping is good, uh, we should have uh, this completed by June 10th, hopefully for the 2022 concert series there. Um, just two other quick items. Um, I, along with Councilman Thomas, attended the Northern News Hubby Wolf Citizen of the Year Awards dinner this past uh, March 31st, and I wish the best for all the winners that were there at that. And um, just some news for myself. I'm currently a member of the MML Board of Directors this year, 
and I just filed to run again for the board in June at the MML Summer Conference in Ocean City. And I want a special thanks to Public Works. They've saved the town over $21,000 by correct. removing the old structures and not paying someone else to remove them. Thank you. Piece of cake, right? Ben? All right. Um, March average water usage was 344,000 gallons per day. Um, so far this month, uh, April, we're at 345,000 gallons per day. The total rainfall last month of March was 2.95 inches, and so far for April is 1.81 1, 1 inches. Um, also a reminder that hydrants flushing will occur April 20th um, at 9 p.m. And then also, I'm sure the mayor might touch on this, or I, I was told to read this as well, is that uh, the insurance service office will be in Hampstead April 27th conducting seven fire flow tests from 9 a.m. until noon. These tests evaluate our water system and comprise part of the calculations regarding fire insurance rates for our town. Last time we were evaluated was 2011, and we expect to see significant improvements since we've upgraded our water. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. 11 years seems like a long period of time. Yeah. Generally, it's every 10. I held him off last year until we finished our uh, laterals. 1936 pipe on the side streets. So he, he'll be here next uh, two weeks. Very good. Chief. Can't really tell. You're on. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, during March, we investigated uh, 13 traffic accidents. Two were reportable. 11 were minor property damage only, and two of the crashes took place at the 483 traffic circle. Speed signs were up at 11 locations for a total of 68 days of display. Uh, traffic enforcement included 78 selective enforcements over just under 25 hours of activity. Three, three citations, I'm sorry, and 17 warnings were issued during that activity. Overall traffic enforcement included 34 citations and 96 warnings. We conducted 416 property checks of businesses and schools. Serious crime included two DUIs, three assaults of the second degree. They were all domestic related. Uh, we took two people into custody for DUIs, two adults for domestic related assaults, and one juvenile for a domestic related assault as well. 327 hours of training were completed. Uh, topics included uh, radar, OC refresher, uh, taser course, mental health first aid, cultural awareness and diversity, uh, some CPR courses, additional watch guard training, that's the cameras that we use, uh, as well as uh, a two-week course for our two new officers uh, that began with us on the 14th. Uh, Scott Crager and Samantha Reese, they're actually mentioned, I believe, in the newsletter, um, are two new officers. Uh, they go through a two-week in-house course that's going to go over the way, everything from how we do things here in the town uh, to uh, the various, uh, a lot of the various courses that you hear me read off uh, on our meetings to bring them up to speed. You should see them. Actually, they've been out on the street uh, for almost two weeks now, so if you've seen them out there, um, that's who they are. Uh, our community events included a visit by St. George's Youth Group, uh, the police department. Uh, we did some car seat installation work as well. Cub Scouts were out to see us again, and we attended, attended the Roberts Fields HOA. Um, I apologize a little bit. Uh, the council has not received its typical police report by email. Uh, you know, we had some events, as the mayor talked about earlier. We're a little bit behind, but we should have that stuff out to you. Tomorrow morning, sometime, and that's pretty much everything. Questions for Chief? Again, nice job, thank you. Uh, my comments. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, in the last month, we had a uh, Maryland Municipal League Carroll County chapter meeting up in Manchester, which was very well attended. They talked about the legislative initiatives that are that uh, now, with the General Assembly finishing up yesterday, are now passed into law. Uh, one of the positives, um, which we found out about when I was down in Annapolis for the Maryland Mayor's Conference for a couple of days, um, we talked about highway user revenue. We, we had an economist come in and forecast where we're going to be for the rest of this year and uh, the, the cloudy crystal ball for next year. But then also we went over to see the governor at the mansion 
and that's when he told us that a deal had been worked out for highway user revenues for us. Um, the, the amount of money that is shared from you pumping your gas into your car locally and that tax you pay the state and how much it comes into the into various municipalities. And so um, that was one of our initiatives. It's been one of our initiatives for some period of time because it was supposed to sunset in 2024. We're about to approach fiscal year 23. That's the plan we're current, the budget plan we're currently working on. So I think I've talked to you in the past that when O'Malley cut us back to like, I think $10,000 in one year, um, that you know we've been building up steadily since at one point I think we've got we usually got to around where we are today um, or upwards of three hundred thousand dollars and like the cost of everything especially with the cost of oil going through the roof um, tar is not any cheaper right and so all, all that material now costs a lot of money but we're going to go from two hundred sixty thousand dollars next year to three hundred and twelve thousand dollars in twenty four to three hundred fifty two thousand dollars in twenty five the three hundred ninety-one thousand dollars in twenty-six, where it'll stay for fiscal year twenty-seven, before it comes back down to three hundred twelve and twenty-eight when it sunsets again. And the reason it's sunsetting is because there's so much um, electric vehicle use in Maryland, um, and the, you know you can argue about the the cost of, of electric vehicles and how much more they are than gas-powered vehicles and who can afford them. But then there's also, a, you know, a tax advantage if you buy electric vehicles. But then the other thing, the tax advantage is you, you're not filling up at the gas pump, right? You're still running on all these roads, and we're not getting any revenue for it. So there's been a task force put forward to talk about how they're going to split that money in the past and what revenue sources they're going to use because simply taking a percentage of the gas tax is not going to work anymore with so many people on, on hybrid or electric vehicles. So what that adds up to in the future is anyone's guess. I know that vehicle miles traveled is always one thing that's talked about, which would adversely impact the people that live in further out communities like Hampstead. But um, we'll see how that works out. But at least for the next five years, um, we're getting a greater percentage and a higher amount than what we're used to seeing, which will help us keep our roads up to snuff and the way they should be without potholes and, and uh, bumps and whatnot. So that was a good piece of news. Um, groundbreaking at the Hampstead Volunteer Fire Company. That was uh, very well attended, as Tammy said, and um, it you know it was uh, it was just great to see them finally moving forward and break and break literally breaking ground there. And um, it's up to us now to raise the money that's needed for the fire station. I think they're talking eight mil, eight million dollars when it's all said and done. They'll have a social hall in the back and the fire a fully functioning fire department in the front. If COVID's taught them anything, is you can't have a social hall attached to a fire hall anymore. You have to have two separate buildings. But we'll have brand new modern facilities. Um, I, I found it interesting that the width of the doors was 12 feet, and that was state of the art back in 17, but now the width of the trucks is 10 feet, 10 and a half feet. So there's not a lot of wiggle room there, and I think there's been a couple of times where that garage door has been popped. So, um, so it'll be good to see that happen over the next two years, and we look forward to the ribbon cutting. Uh, in the not too distant future, but it's now up to everybody here to, um, you know, if you, whether you live in town or not, if you're listening to my voice on TV or on, the, on your computer, that uh, these volunteer fire companies and ambulance services do an tremendous, tremendous job for us, and there is not anybody in this room that either hasn't been directly touched or knows, you know, one off who's somebody who's been directly touched by the service they provide. So, you know, it's something that we should step up and gladly, hopefully, write a check for. So that there's, a, you know, they're able to continue that service for the for the next several decades um, for Hampstead. So that's all good news. Um, Dave mentioned scholarships, which jogged my memory that we also give out a town scholarship. We do three uh, this year, one thousand dollars scholarships, and you know, typically last minute kind of thing. But we'll present them to Manchester Valley um, worthy people who live in Hampstead. That's always a challenge because our our boundaries are a little. Uh, squiggly shall we say so we you know you think you're in town but you're not so <clears throat> we'll have three one thousand dollar scholarships and then we had katie hersey in town which um you know dave and Wayne, wayne mentioned that they were at the northern news thing so it was good to hear that she was in town and um you know she's our olympic medalist for triathlons and so we had katie hersey day on april 1st up at greenmount station and a meet and greet and it was just great to see everybody who came through some of her old teachers from North Carroll came back. Um, Troy Wareheim, the athletic director from North Carroll, came back. A lot. Of, it was a good time um, by all, and it was great to reminisce. And she's just such a – the word to describe her is humble. 
but also the perseverance, you know, given the first Olympics she was in in Brazil didn't go as planned for her to stick it out, come back, and, and do so well with everything that happened to her personally during that period of time was just great to see, and it's just such a great family. So that was, that was a great night. Uh, lastly, he's in the audience. He doesn't necessarily want the notoriety, but, you know, Mr. Harrell has, has been, you know, he's been at our, several of our meetings since, well, I guess he's one back from where he normally sits in the chair. But he walked in the town hall about a week ago with a $25,000 check for our police department. Um, you know, totally unsolicited. And, Doug, we just can't thank you enough uh, because of what we're going to be able to So, you know, the budget money only goes so far, and the inflation is definitely, like every other business, taking a bite out of us. Um, and there's only so, you know, only so much income coming in, so that is really going to be a godsend, and we really appreciate it. And thank you for that donation. Fire department Always volunteer fire company people. They mentioned that it's groundbreaking that uh, you know they're not getting any younger. Witness Kevin, sorry, sitting in the front, <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the front. He's you know our public works director too. But uh, yeah, that, always good to see um, some younger folks involved in that. Just like we're you know we're being, been fortunate here of a little bit of late with our police department to get people who are a little bit younger, and um, you know we've been able to put them through the police police academy and for you know for the most part you know with rare exception they're sticking and it's always beneficial to have young people who are part of the town and grew up here who understand it a lot less to teach them all right that's it for my comments so under new business um, we have a couple of we have an, a reappointment and an appointment um, first reappointment <coughs> It's Charles Obermeyer on the Planning and Zoning Commission. He filled out a term for a year, so now he's willing to step up. I didn't have to twist his arm to the point where I broke it, but he's willing to step up for five years um, and serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission, and he's been doing a great job since. So I'll take a motion for that appointment. So moved. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, and before we have him come up here and, and do the swearing in, we'll also do Molly Rose at the same time that Wayne, Wayne mentioned who wants who would like to serve on our Hampstead Tree Commission for a term of three years. Molly, thank you for stepping up and doing that. So take a motion for that. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. All right, so Charlie, you're up first. Sure, I don't think you meant it five years. <laughs> yeah, I did. I remember the look on your face. I was like, why is <laughs> We didn't get to tell him. So, all right, right hand. I, Charles Obermeyer. I, Charles Obermeyer. Do swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. The town of Hampstead, the town of Hampstead, and support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office as a member of the Hampstead Planning and Zoning Commission. Execute the office as a member of the Hampstead Planning and Zoning Commission according to the Constitution and laws of the state. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He gets that copy. Thanks. That's my better signature. You gotta sign twice in the hands. Gotta sign. Talk about a signature. It's awful. I know I didn't bring out two pens. I apologize. You get that one. You get that one. Sure. We can. Saw how it works. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm Molly Rose. I'm Molly Rose. Do you swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States? Do you swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States? And that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. And I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. The town of Hampstead. The town of Hampstead. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And I will, to the best of my skill and judgment. And I will, to the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office as a member of the Tree Commission of the town of Hampstead. 
Execute the office as a member of the tree commission of the town of Hampstead. According to the constitutional laws of the state. According to the constitutional laws of the state. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's permanent. Now that's a real signature. That's <laughs> 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 You need to sign this one of our records. And then I'll sign it. <laughs> That's some serious penmanship. You can actually tell that's your name. <laughs> that's, that's yours. yours. Thank you. That's ours. Bam. Want to take a picture? Sure. You can come up. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you again. Thank you, Molly. Sure. <laughs> So just like the fire department needs volunteers, we do too. Um, so it's great that these people step up, and it's great to see a, a younger generation stepping up as well. All right. Um, award of a contract for the floor renovations of the police station, which was a request for bids, 20, 2203. There were two bids submitted, one by Town Pride, one by Trainers. Both are worthy bids. Uh, Trainers has apparently done one for the Sykesville Police Station, and it went very well. They're the low bidder. The suggestion is that we award Trainers the contract at $14,034.29. Thank you. Second. Oh, you're reading and checking it out. Okay. Good. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. All right. And then the ordinances and resolutions, we're going to introduce a charter amendment, um, resolution 2022-02, which is a resolution updating the, amend the minimum cost for which a purchaser or contract is required to go to the bid process. Apparently, our $10,000 bid number has been the bid number since the, the since the charter was written in 1970. So inflation, it should probably be 30 or something higher, but it's 20,000 is what we're suggesting it go to. So we need an, a motion to introduce the charter amendment. So moved. Second. So moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, that was easy. Public comments. <coughs> Okay, the Boy Scout has to now stand up to earn his merit badge. Oh, Boy Scout. Introduce yourself and your troop and what you learned tonight. Uh, my name is Brian. I come from Troop 706. Very good. Right here. And up the street, like you said, I learned a lot of things. I saw someone be sworn into office, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then I also learned that there's a money opportunity for community life troops. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to be rewarded for your work every once in a while. Well, thank you and good luck with your Eagle Scout badge. I, as I hear, you're real close. Before he sits down, Ryan is the scout that did the steps at the at the Hempstead wow. train station. No, very good. We did the steps. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you basically already have your Eagle Scout project out of the way, then? Yep. Yeah. That was, that was oh, very cool. So what's your final badge then? Very good. Good job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Any further public comment? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And thank you for those who are watching online and on TV tonight. Appreciate you being here. All right. Thank you all.